Setting up live on Facebook. Cheers, everybody. Hi. I assume we're live. It's still saying setting. Oh, redirecting the Facebook live page. Hi. Drinking my big old water. I know. You're drinking out of a glass bottle, too, which is so good. Uh -huh. Live on Life and Block. I said, you're drinking out of a glass bottle. It's saying, we're sorry, we're having trouble playing this video. How upsetting. So it's not on me, right? Because it's not because my reception is bad out here, is it? I don't know. It's not telling me why. So we'll just record it on Zoom and then, and then we'll just upload it later. Record. Hi, um, everybody. Hi, <laughs> hi everybody. It's saying it's live. We don't know. So we're just recording it as well. Hello, everybody. It's Tanisha Renee, the Life and Blocker. And I'm here Christy with B, Holistic Urbanite. That's right. And we're here today to talk about the power of deep breathing. So um, it's very important. Crystal is a yogi and she is excellent. She has a lot of wealth of knowledge of the power of deep breathing. How we don't really breathe that deeply. Now, you know, a lot of us, once we leave childhood, <laughs> once we leave infancy, right? You know, I think babies, they naturally breathe deeply. And um, as we grow up, like the tensions, and stresses of life cause us to breathe really shallowly. You know, we don't get, really get that deep breath way down, way down in the abdomen. So, Chrissy, did you want to talk about that? Because I have something to read about that. But. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> oh, my goodness. So there, there's so many places. Okay. So first and foremost, we want to talk about pranayama breathing, which is mm -hmm. basically um, deep breathing. It is the, there are so many different kinds of deep breathing, uh, which is fascinating in and of itself. Right. Um, and so we, one of the, one of the, I mean, like the different uh, techniques to ex do it. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So because in in the deep breathing zone, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, so there's there's like four parts or five parts to yoga, right? So there's mm -hmm. meditation and self-reflection, there's deep breathing, there's actually doing the exercises, right? So all of this is part of yoga. Okay. Which is union with self. Mm -hmm. And some people say union with God. Um, okay. It's all kind of interpretations, but it's mostly union with your higher self for the most part. And mm -hmm. so when you're practicing pranayama breathing, um, so one of the breath works that I'd like to talk about today is a breath exercise called Kapalabhati. 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 So Kapalabhati, okay. yes. <laughs> um, Kapala Bhakti is considered, it's called the shining skull. Mm. And this breath work is, I believe, is very pertinent today because it can help with the most fascinating thing that we're dealing with right now. And that is upper respiratory, your nasal and your, your nasal cavity and your upper respiratory area, Kapalabhati is, in, is very crucial in getting rid of mucus and clearing out mm. the nasal respiratory area for breathing and for health. Okay. So right now, you know, we're, we're at threat with the coronavirus and all that, and that is a respiratory virus. So something like learning Kapalabhati breathing is something that could be very crucial. It could potentially save your life. Like that's how serious this is. Um, so I'm flying away, you guys. So I do apologize. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm Dorothy. Oh my God, it is. Um, <laughs> so um, it can, I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like it's stripped. Like it won't, I keep... I'm trying to make it stay in place. And it won't. Um, okay, no moving. Well, I have to read something about it. <laughs> okay, so let me just, just really quick. I'm going to oh. um, move around it? a little bit. I'm gonna move you okay. away from me, and I just want to show you my abdominal. So, just really quick. 
quick. I'm doing a, a little trick here. Okay, here we go. So this is your abdominal area. So Kapalabhati breathing is it's a quick inhale, it's a forced inhale, and a, it's a, a involuntary exhale, right? So in the through the nose, you close your mouth. So a good way someone showed me how to do it is think of yourself as panting like a dog. So you open your mouth and you let your tongue hang out and you just go, <laughs> right? And so what you're doing is you're snapping your, your ab in. It's like, <laughs> Right? So that's that's the training piece. Okay. So the way you do it is you actually seal your mouth, you close your mouth, mm -hmm. and so the, it should be something like this. Through your nose, you should hear. Okay? Uh -huh. So you're not you're not gonna keep your mouth open, but that's just the way of thinking of yourself panting oh. like a dog. You're going okay. Right? So you're not going to pant like a dog through your mouth. You're going to close your mouth and you're going to go. Okay. Okay. Now, Kapalabhati breathing, the whole point of that is so you're inhaling and you're sending the breath out your nose. Hmm. And when you do this, you're clearing out your sinuses. So the, the, wow. the air should be coming out your nose on the exhale. So, it, so it's a quick inhale and then you exhale the air out. Okay. okay. And when and Kapalabhati, and the way you do Kapalabhati is you do 45. So if, if I were, if we were in a group setting and I was counting you through it, we would do like 45. So it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like really quick like that. So we you do four you do three rounds. Okay. And you do one round of 45. And then after that round of 45, the second time you then then you wait a moment, you do a big inhale, and then the second time you hold your breath for 45 seconds. Mm. Right? So you gotta retain the breath. So you do, ah, you almost flew away from me. So you do, um, out there. Mm -hmm. huh? I so said you got some real wind out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you do, um, you do through your nose 45 times, right? Mm -hmm. And oh. then you, and then you in, and then after you exhale that all out, and then you inhale and you hold that breath for 45 seconds, and then you exhale. And then you do 45 more Kapalabhatis. And then you hold that breath for 45 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then you exhale it out. And then you inhale. And then you do Kapalabhati for 60 times. Mm -hmm. 60, 60 times. So theoretically, that's like one minute cause, cause, because each breath is like a second. Okay. And then the last time you inhale and you retain your breath for 60 seconds and then you exhale it out. And so in the future, I will do a whole video on this and hopefully we'll, we'll do this uh, in the future in a workshop scenario. So I can really, uh, we can get a hands on and people can really know um, how to do it. But the most important thing to know is that this is a great breath to do, especially right now. It has fantastic healing abilities mm -hmm. um, um when i was when i learned this technique when i was in the bahamas i went away to a retreat at the sivananda yoga retreat mm -hmm. in the bahamas and when i was there when i learned kapalabhati breathing i came in with like a bronchial infection hmm. because i was just having like uh i guess like an adjustment to the area yes. um the sand was getting in my chest and i could feel it like, you know, normal people, when we inhale a breath, you know, there's so much debris and stuff that goes in our lungs. There's so much that we don't even know that we take for granted. And unfortunately, my lungs were so sensitive when I was there, I actually could feel all the sand and all the debris in the sand. And it felt like glass cutting my lungs. Mm. It was the most excruciating, painful experience ever. It was like this, I'm at this beautiful paradise place 
but the area is like making my lungs inflamed. So it was very difficult. So eventually what happened was as I continued to do the breath, I started doing the breath. We did the breath twice a day, but I started doing it more. Um, And when I started doing it more and kind of just like cleansing my lungs, uh, I was able to find relief in that. So that's how serious this is. Um, And beyond the, beyond doing it every day, um, with Kapalabhati, you want to be careful because it is a very energizing breathing technique. So, you know, if you're trying to retire for the evening, this is not the kind of um, breath work you want to do at night. It's not calming. It's very energizing. So okay. it's the perfect kind of breath you want to do when you wake up in the morning. Or even if you're at work and you're on your lunch break and you walk down the street somewhere to the park or anywhere, you know, you just sit there and just, just do your breathing. You can do it in traffic Mm -hmm. because it's, again, it's very awakening. It's very energizing. It's not something that's going to make you sedate. So you can do it anywhere you get a moment that you can do it. And even if you can't do the three, the 45, 45, 60, even if you can't do that, just even if you just do it 45 seconds in Mm -hmm. your car, right? just do it as much as you can. Uh, This breathing technique helps you to get fresh nutrient oxygen into your body, which then translates into cleansing your blood, detoxifying your blood in your body for energy, for nutrients, for an array of things. If you right. practice Kapalabhati breathing over the course of six months to a year with a healthy diet, of course, a lot of water and a healthy diet, uh, you they say you get an effect where like, you shine, your face begins, you basically get the glow, you get the juice. You know the halo. You, they say this is what you get. I haven't well, done that. You, you said that you get a what? A Jesus? Oh, glow? you get the halo glow if you continue to practice Kapalabhati. I would say like anywhere if you do practice every day, anywhere from three to six months, every single day, right. you get the halo glow. You'll get the. It's because it's called shining skull breathing. Wow. Okay. So what happens is you get the glow. You know, you get that glow, Mm -hmm. cleanse and detoxify your body on such a level that your face and everything begins to glow and shine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. So I love this because we talk a lot, you know, uh, especially, you know, in life on Blanca with the healing I do, it's a lot of, it's, you know, five levels. So it's the spiritual, intuitive, emotional, mental levels as well. And then it filters down to the physical. But there's so much that we can do with the physical body to assist it to heal, you know, to assist it to heal uh, various yes. elements. So something as simple as breathing can be so monumental to our healing and our well-being. And I just want to say hi to Morgan. Morgan said, hey. Oh, my God. Are we live? <laughs> I guess we are live, guys. We have a- Facebook wasn't playing the video, but I guess some people could see it because Morgan said Yay! hi. Just want to say hi to Morgan. You know, um, but yeah, and I just want to leave, uh, read this article that I found as well. Oh, good. Okay. And it's called uh, The Art of Conscious Breathing, a Powerful Exercise to Purify and Rejuvenate the Body and Mind. And it says, the way you breathe is the way you live. Breathing is absolutely essential to life, but it's often overlooked as a necessity for good health. Full free breathing is one of the most powerful keys to enhancing physical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. Breathing fully and freely is our birthright. If you watch a baby breathe, you will see the beauty and simplicity of flow in the body. With each inhale, the baby's belly fills with an air like a balloon, the pelvis rocks, the legs open, the chest rises and falls like swells across the ocean. This is natural, oceanic, full body breathing. It is the way we were meant to breathe. And it's like, it's saying that the baby at this point doesn't know or do this consciously, but simply experiences an inherent peace, joy, and connectedness with all things. So over time, the child absorbs and accumulates the tensions and stresses of their family and learns behavior from their environment. As we each experience the joys, challenges, and traumas of life, we begin to anticipate and react from our past experiences of pleasure and pain. 
unfortunately, we lose the freedom and expansiveness that were natural at birth. We become afraid of disapproval, punishment, or abandonment. We experience unpleasant feelings that we don't know how to handle. As a result, we begin to contract more, often or even shut down. We learn to control ourselves to be good, to receive positive attention. We sacrifice our desires for the approvals of others. To control ourselves in this way, we unconsciously tighten our muscles and restrict our breathing. We discover that the less we breathe, the less we feel and the easier it is to get through the challenges and difficulties of modern life. Over time, this process develops habitual unconscious reactions that lock up the body and prevent the full expression of both pleasure and pain. The essential flow of life force energy becomes kinked like a hose and every functioning system in the body will eventually degrade faster. And I found that absolutely incredible, you know, just to link it back to something that we do every day, but it's actually linked to, you know, as we go through life and as we shift and change to conform to our different environments and our family and society, you know, we become more constricted. We become less free, less of who we are. And I just thought that was an amazing uh, revelation, you know? Yeah, uh, it's it's a tricky thing. It's very interesting. In one breath, we constrict our breath and we shut down to not feel or to um, it's a it's a defense mechanism to kind of control our environment or our circumstances. Mm -hmm. But then what happens is when you when you kind of like backpedal and you go back and you learn, you know, because obviously as mentioned in the article. Do all these things naturally, mm -hmm. but as we get older, we stop the things that we do naturally. And so what happens is if we uh, go back to the beginning, then it's not about proper like it's difficult. It's just proper. It's just do your nose and out your mouth. Do your nose out your mouth, or do your mouth out your nose. The best way to, to breathe though is with the lips sealed. Just because um, you don't want to inhale something unnatural through your mouth, so it's better to inhale and exhale through your nose when you're doing the techniques. But the most important thing is that when you learn all the different breathing techniques, or even if you just do basic um, full abdominal breathing, you do begin to feel it. You know, there's an awakening and an awareness that happens. You begin to feel your own body and you begin to um, have a, a certain level of consciousness with this deep breathing. So it's very interesting that we have um, learned how to constrict the breath, which cuts us off from our own selves and who we are. And, and then we experience pain and suffering from that where if we were to do the opposite, continue to keep breathing in a situation, if you if something makes you feel uncomfortable or even something as terrible as a horrible trauma, when you deep breathe, that helps you to actually get more in tune to your own emotions. So oh, can you repeat it, that part? Because the wind was blowing. Oh, it allows you to get in tune to your own emotions. Mm -hmm. So then you can release that. And you can have a different kind of consciousness and awareness about it. Right. So that's what deep breathing, uh, aside from what it does physically to the body in terms of cleansing and detoxifying, it also helps you with mental clarity and focus and concentration. Yes. And even in uh, my healing sessions with the one-on-ones, uh, when we're doing the clearing, periodically I will ask the person to take a deep breath and let it out. Because just even that moment, you know, allows you to process. It allows those emotions to, like you said, get and detox that out. You know, because sometimes when you're just going, 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 you don't give your mind and body that break to kind of just process and just kind of settle into what's happening. Um, it, it's not as effective in that moment. So when they take a breath and they breathe in and out and let everything kind of settle, 
you know, then you can kind of see what's bubbling up from the subconscious or what the subconscious wants you to pay attention to or focus on next and we can proceed. So yeah, uh, intuitively I was doing a lot of deep breathing um, with the clients inside the one-on-one healings. And now Mm -hmm. we see how much more powerful that is and how much more effective to the healing that it actually is. Yeah, and I'm putting a course together and in the course, the course I'm putting together is a course that will, uh, it, it's an array of different exercises, but um, the, the most important thing is that it's a, it's a it, there will be breathing techniques that will, you know, they say, haha, they say uh, breathing techniques that help to like raise your kundalini, right? Mm-hmm. So your kundalini is, the image of it is the snake coiled in the base of your spine. Mm-hmm. And as it comes up your spinal column and uh, out through your uh, crown chakra, that is um, your basically the pathway from the base of your spine to your crown. That's your that is the journey of your spirituality as the serpent goes up your spinal column. That's the image. And also as you um, awaken this. Uh, energy within your body, it's actually an, a, an awakening and an awareness and, uh, and an, uh, it opens up your ability to your highest self Yes, in this life. Exactly. <laughs> you know, a lot of people talk about kundalini and it's a very exotic and uh, interesting uh, and elusive idea. But the most important thing to know about um, kundalini awakening is that it is you implementing your highest potential Mm. and I have learned that one of the ways is through extensive very interesting breath exercises wow yeah we're looking forward to that (laughs) (laughs) we're looking forward to more of that yeah. So good, guys. Uh, we're not sure if we're live yet, so I can't see if anyone has any questions. But I'll be able to later on check and see. And we're going to be doing these. We're going to try to do them every Monday. Just our contribution to how we can really heal and get back in tune with our higher selves. And uh, yeah, just let us know what you guys think and any topics that you want us to talk about or cover. That would be amazing. And uh, anything else? That's um, anyway. that's really it. I really, you know, if you guys could watch this video over and over and over and over and really start working on Kapalavati breathing, I'm gonna try to do more videos on it. I'm just gonna really focus on Kapalavati because I just think that that's an awesome healing exercise and it's very simple for anybody to do. Okay. Um, and that's just a great place to start. And if you feel like you really don't understand and you just want to practice deep breathing just you know inhale through your nose and um yeah inhale through your nose and then exhale through your mouth and just like really hold your lower abdominal and really allow you know as you inhale allow your lower abdominal to swell and then you exhale and then it goes in and then you inhale and it swells out because huh? even when I used to do a uh, singing lesson, they would tell you to breathe in deep and like let your bottom expand like a tire, like That's all right. the way around, like front, That's side, right. back, like imagine like a tire expanding. That's how yeah. much air that you can actually get down there. We don't even use all of our potential we can really get a lot of air in there and that's how these singers and you know these opera singers are really belting it out because they could really they know how to really get that air down there and utilize it so it's like even if you imagine like a you know a tire expanding around your lower abdomen that's how much air you can expand to and then out like you said through the exactly and that's the exactly that's that's that is the simplest deep breathing you can do. That is the right. best deep breathing. And I would say, you know, as you get um, better with that and become more conscious with it, and, and as you get up every day and you really start being a little bit more cognizant of how you're breathing, you know, if you're uh, shallow breathing in your chest and really send the air down into your abdominal area, you know, you can get faster with that, right? You can just, right. you can go... 
And as you, as you go faster, it creates energy in your body and it makes your body vibrate. And you can really like um, energize your day with that kind of deep breathing. So right. yeah. yeah, so keep working on it and I'll keep doing videos. So, you know, we will, um, you know, I don't know, one day maybe I'll just do a whole, I have to figure out a way to do like a, just a whole demonstration on, on all the different breathing techniques exactly um, yeah 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 so thank you guys we're gonna head out just a little quick a little quick little ditty that we wanted to do on the power deep breathing we're gonna be back here at six next week and we're gonna be talking about a very awesome topic fasting 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 i'm actually doing a fast now water fast Woo. Child. And, <laughs> and I'm, I'm on a, I, I started the master cleanse 12 days ago. So I've been, so by next Monday, it'll be a few days for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm on my 12th day. Uh, I'm doing water today. I'm getting ready to go make the master cleanse in a few minutes. But for now, I'm just drinking water. I was drinking coconut water. So I'm just gonna, and we'll talk more about that next week next week so we really want to do some things to help our body to help our body heal as well help that physical body heal as well so if you guys are interested in healing though of course we have the healing circle people are getting amazing results in the healing circle and i also do one-on-one -on -one healings as well um those are very limited because they're very intensive and um very intensive but they are very effective very effective really gets to the root of those blocks that's keeping us uh, just keeping us stuck so we can get unblocked unstuck and move on with life and Chrissy V is going to be putting together a lot of things for yoga again getting yeah. down into that body getting our body moving and flowing with the breath and with the energy so we can just have mind body spirit flowing together the way it's supposed to go so we can be living our best optimal life <laughs> And it, it all goes together. You know, exactly. It all goes together. Exactly. You have a deep healing. It's so, I love when I do healings with you and I just, I'll go and I'll kind of like sit with myself and just breathe yes. for a little while and just kind of like let it all <laughs> sink in. Yes. Because sometimes when you're releasing these deep traumatic things in your life, you just got to take a moment. You can't get a healing with her and then just run off and keep on with life. Really, when you do your healings, you want to set that space and time to sit and listen and allow the healing to come over you and, and sit in that, you know, 20 to 30 minutes after the healing is over, you know, continue with your breathing and being quiet and being still because that's how you allow your body time to integrate all the healing, you know. Mm. And that's interesting. I may do something for the healing circle to put that in there as well. Yeah. So that they can also practice some deep breathing, um, you know, which we naturally do this at night, right? We naturally do this when we sleep. So when we, we naturally... go to bed at night, we know our body be like, okay, I'm done with you. Yes. It, <laughs> I'm you done know. with you, mind. I'm doing this. I'm handling this. Yes. Yes. So naturally. That's why sometimes if you do something or even if you do a healing or something and the next day when you go to sleep and wake up, you have a totally different perspective and a totally different uh, view of things like oh wow that wasn't even that deep because when you go to sleep and you get down into and we're going to talk about that one day the, the different brain waves states like uh delta theta beta which we're in right now and gamma you get down to that nice theta and delta deep sleep and let your body rejuvenate and heal itself and organize and you wake up, you have a different perspective on it. You do this breathing naturally when you go to sleep. <laughs> it's windy out here. Blow away, LA. guys. So, <laughs> so we're going to say bye. Thank you so much for joining us. And we will talk to you very soon. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Next Monday. Next Monday. See you soon. Bye.